and Dead on Luck Chapter 136 never change. And Yoshifumi Gotsuka, for me, please never change. You're writing peak on Dead on Luck right now. Two of the things we've been anticipating the most this new loop. New Umas along with the reintroduction of the strongest in all of creation. We gotta talk about this chapter, y'all. Hey, before we hop in, it don't cost nothing to show no love. It don't cost nothing to show a nigga love. I ain't doing this big money. Please drop a like, a comment, subscribe if you're new here. We really appreciate all the support you've been giving us. And sheesh, let's just get into 136. We begin the chapter as Jean is paying respects to her late grandmother at her gravesite, and she actually gifts her a painting of Lake Baikal, apparently their favorite location. And I thought this was a really dope callback to the original Unchained arc, as this is actually where we found Gina. It's making me think maybe she was trying to protect a very significant location to her. I know she was hunting an Uma out there back then, so it makes me think like, dang, she's just trying to preserve, trying to keep things from changing within something that's really close to her heart. And it's a really dope thing, I think, bringing up that chapter right now during 136, because there's a lot of parallels that we see from then to this chapter. Back during the Unchanged arc while painting with Fuko, Gina says that she prefers when things don't change. And here during 136, we see where that fear of change actually developed. She was a content woman just painting with her grandmother and living with her. She wanted that moment in reality, that part of her time, to never change. And she feared how change was constant, how it was unpredictable, and how it was often unwarranted. And it's almost as if this inability to come to terms with the fact that the only thing constant in life is change is what made her manifest her ability. And we've seen this pattern a plethora of times before Top, thinking that, you know, I'm the fastest dude out here. I've got to stop for my friends. And he becomes unstoppable. Shikara being caught in a moment, not being able to move where his parents really needed him. Hey, move. Literally procs the ability. Unmove. It's a crazy thing that very often happens within this series. And it's a pattern I've talked about beforehand. However, this god fella, this god woman, is a screwball. But seriously, this is a really dope origin story for Gina. I really love the fact that we met her in the previous loop and she's a completely unchanged version of the same person she was at this moment in her life. This inflection point where not only did she lose her grandmother, but she kinda got screwed over. Everything within her life turned flipped upside down with this introduction of Uma Heat. And you can only imagine that if this were to happen to the same thing in the previous loop, that she would have manifested that ability and she would have been so mad and gone so crazy that 40,000 people around her would have gotten caught in the hubbub of it. And it really made sense. I'm happy that Fuko and the gang showed up and that's what we gotta talk about now. So as this big mug strolls into town, we get a glimpse at it. Our first new Uma, Heat. And this was a dope introduction. This guy comes in burning everything down in this snowy town and he says, huh. Let's pump up the temperature. Let's heat things up and change shit up a bit. And it's funny as heck how he says this exact wording. And it's what kind of tips Gina over the edge. And it really makes me think that like God is literally speaking through this individual right now, just trying to manifest, trying to birth a negator, I guess to say. But that's besides the point. Gina finally gets that, you know, straw that breaks the camel's back, and she manifests her ability, begins to use Unchange. However, the gang arrives on time. Nico actually uses a cube version of the psychopods to contain and isolate Gina's ability, and there we go. And a really cool nod as well. Fuko understands that the users of Unchanged don't completely encase themselves in Unchanged or else they're gonna asphyxiate as well. So he makes sure that Nico leaves a bottom area so that not only can Gina move, but she can breathe as well. And I thought this was just dope. A really cool small tidbit of information that shows that Fuko truly understands everybody and that's, you know, her characteristic empathy. But this right here, yeah, this is what got me the hypest I've been in a long time. Fuko's level up, her telling Nico and Ichiko, get out of here, I'm a one woman army, let me get this done. Let's talk about this. So similar to Gina, Fuko's an external targeting type negator. However, she's a compulsory type, just meaning that if she touches anything, she's going to transmit her ability. She's going to use un unluck on it inherently, just given the fact that that's the type of ability she has. And although this ability is immeasurably strong, we've seen it do a lot of feats from a high level to a low level throughout the series, 
We understand that it can be weaker just given that sliding scale it has towards its target. It has to have a high affection towards a target in order for her to unleash a big stroke of unluck. And in order to overcome that weakness, over the past 170 years, Foucault has learned how to imbue tools and objects with her unluck. And let's talk about the importance of that. Foucault begins her bout with heat by firing off a couple shots at him. However, these shots immediately melt as they get near him just due to the heat which he's emitting. However, this woman is prepared for a fight. She didn't say I'm a one woman army for no reason and she hasn't been alive for 190 years without learning a couple tricks or two. She pulls out the G-liner pin and makes herself a heat resistant robe. She says, if I can't fire from far away, then let me get up close then. So she puts this robe on, jumps down on top of heat, and he's like, wait, this is a hard boiled lady. Once on top of heat's head, Fuka whips out a bandolier of bullets on her arm, and she calls these the bad bullets. And this is the significance I was mentioning a bit earlier. Fuko now has the ability to fight on her own with weapons that are strong enough to wipe out an Uma of this caliber like this. And it's crazy to see that our little girl, our main character who needed a whole gang of people to help her fight out in the first loop, is now just a one woman army. Like she's about to solo Andy next time I see her. <laughs> Foucault uses bad bullet number 44, marked 1928, to deliver a blow right into Heat's dome. And the unluck that comes. Brother. Knowing a really large stroke of unluck is on the way, Foucault hops on her Quinto Un Cloud, swoops Gina, and tries to get out of the vicinity as quick as possible. And although it's a bit confusing for Gina given she's never met the woman, her and Foucault have a heartfelt introduction together them finally becoming friends like Foucault's wanted to do since the past loop, like her grandmother wanted her to find, and eh, just a heartwarming moment. However, this gets cut a little bit short, given what this stroke of unluck is. We see something appear high up in the sky, and something comes down with a meteoric strike, blowing a crater into the earth, obliterating Uma heat. And I'm just sitting here wondering, what in the world could this possibly be? But it's the arrival of a young man, a young dragon, the strongest in all of creation. Pang, boy! Our lad Fang pulls up hot on the scene, destroyed half an entire town. He's got his freaking Zui Xing shit. I can't think of the freaking name of it right now. I could look it up in my notes, however, I don't need to. He's got his rod with him and he looks ready for smoke. And you know what he says, I'm glad I followed that apparition here, kind of detailing that he was following Heat, but he kind of alludes to the fact that he wants to beat Izumo Fuko. And I'm wondering why right now. What I'm thinking is that Fuko, knowing that Fang just wants to fight the strongest in all of creation, pulled up on Fang at a younger age, beat his ass. <laughs> And then was like, hey, Fang, come find me when you're strong enough. The same type of shit that he did to Shin. That, you know what I mean? Because he's just the strongest in all creation. That's all you have to do to string him along. Just keep giving him strong opponents. Keep making him think that there's something higher than you attainable. And that might just be a Zimo Fuko. But dude, a really hot chapter of Undead Unluck. I absolutely loved it. Every single part of it. I don't really have too much to speculate upon because, you know, we just finished this mini arc. But... We're on to the next one immediately, and our boy Fang is freaking here, dog. Let's get it. I'm out of here.